it's one of those things where you try to really figure out what you want in life. I mean, I'm 46 years old. I mean, you got to look at new kids. The kids have them are in their 50s and they're still doing it, which means there is hope for us old people. <laughs> There's hope for old people that can do things like this. You know, you know, we can only pray. But again, you know, doing this and listening and saying 25 years, it's crazy. It's weird. NSYNC's self-titled debut album turned the quintet into worldwide superstars. To mark the 25th anniversary of its American release, the members share with people their memories of recording the collection and going from European breakouts to one of the best-selling boy bands of all time. I mean, debut album was insane for us. Uh, you know, we had lived in Germany for a couple of years and we had already released an album um, and done very, very well over in Europe. Uh, but this was our chance to prove ourselves in our own country. You know, the country we grew up with and watching those television shows to listen to radio stations. Um, and no one cared at all <laughs> about us. You know, it took us a little bit to get, you know, to get people to know who we were in America. But I was so excited to finally come home after so many months overseas, uh, just so that my friends and family could understand what we were going through. There was a lot of times where kids would come to our shows and, and say things like, I'm only here because the Backstreet Boys aren't here. You know, that happened to us all the time. You know, you're talking about a time way, way, way back where, you know, we were trying to promote our first single, I Want You Back. And it was crazy because, you know, like I said, it was obvious. Like there was no point that we were like, we'd get mad about that because we're like, we know, we know that the majority of the kids were coming to our shows because they were Backstreet Boys fans and they wanted to see what this was like. It kind of, it was, it was tough for a while, but you know, we got used to it. Honestly, it was almost like making that we didn't have to worry about taking out kinks of stuff. We were learning mm -hmm. and, and correcting everything as we were going in Europe and really honing in on, you know, we were, we were anal with our stuff. Even, even when we were touring in, 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 the, in the States, right after the show, we get <laughs> handed a VHS tape. We would get handed a tape and there were two buses. Justin, Justin and Chris and JC were on one. They got the tape, they looked at the, the they looked at the performance on the way to the next city. When we'd stop and pull over, they would hand us the tape, me and Lance, they'd say, listen, this is what we this is what our notes were. That's what made us what we were, is because we kept correcting it. We yeah. didn't just go, let's just dance, let's just do the moves and move on. It was, let's see it again. What does that look like? Dude, your hand is that high up. Let's let's fix that. Okay. It's But then, I guess the music kind of uh, spoke for itself. Uh, I think it was when Tearing Up My Heart came out. That's when it really started kind of resonating with people. And TRL, uh, that really helped boost. But then it was really that Disney special that yeah. really blew us up. So that album went from, you know, maybe being in the top 50 to just skyrocketing. I think it went to like number two. Uh, um, and it just didn't stop and it stayed there for months uh, and it just grew and grew and you know as, as big as we were in Europe we had no idea that that debut album with half the same music we already released you know, mm -hmm. a year ago, would sell over 10 million records I mean we never thought that could be done by us mm -hmm. uh, so it was a uh, it was an intense time, but wow, what a what a fun time! Because so many years of trying to make it, uh, it was a good validation for us. I hope you guys had as much fun as we did. We had a blast. I thought it was going to be our Super Bowl. You know, I thought this was everything that we worked for was this show, and not knowing that it was going to you know go on after that. But having that mentality of this is our Super Bowl it was like this is big. We This Disney special just blew it up. We're here and it's like, man, now we really have to work. Like hmm. now it's a whole nother energy level of work because now it's not, you know, us making it work with duct tape and glue. It's, it's us making it work with, you know, beautiful kits, beautiful cars, beautiful toys around us to help us in our creativeness and what we do. And, and man, it was kind of scary, but the fact that it was rising so fast, it was like, 
there was no time to stop and and watch the clouds come in. It yeah. was like run to run to the clouds. Let's go. Let's get this working and just you know insane insane work. Then when we came into the states, it was funny because I grew the goatee. Didn't have facial hair back in the day. Uh, I had an eyebrow piercing, which I did. Um, I honestly, right before we shot the um, I Want You Back video, I had a ski cap on because they were freaking out because I pierced my eyebrow. <laughs> Everything else was cool, but we couldn't do the eyebrow piercing. I'm like, well, why not? Well, we don't want you to do it for the first video. I went, okay, I'll hide it. Because I think if you see it, a couple of shots, I don't have it. And then the next day, my dumbass got it done, like in between while we were shooting the video. Because they see <laughs> the ski cap way low to cover the eyebrow rings but they wanted us to be individual and that's when we came over to states so like yo we want you to be individual we see all these other bands being like so formatted we want you to be formatted on stage but you guys need to have your own individual stuff when we came to the states because of what the spice girls were doing and everything i think there was almost like a an identity uh crisis in the band like i think there was a you know the label the fans it wasn't us because we knew each other you know really well yeah but people didn't know us so it was like coming out it was like okay well he does this so he's the baby one you know he does this he's the crazy one and you know to cut it, it's almost like you were pushed into being a character and you know i got pushed into suddenly oh you're this character and having to like i was like no you know i, I love what we're doing i love music i love performing you know this i don't want to be a character mm -hmm. like i don't want to be this person you're trying to make me but you know in the end it, it worked out and you know we we get we each kind of identified with certain things in those characteristics the only thing that we determined was lance wasn't the funny one you know <laughs> so it was like and i say that joking around because you know lance lance can be funny <laughs> but you know it it really was like um justin was the baby jc was the serious one i was crazy joey was like the italiano guy and then lance was kind of the the young you know southern kid you know yeah. type, type of thing but it didn't get annoying like it was i think it got tedious yeah but not really annoying because we knew we had to do and we knew you know you have to play certain parts god must have spent a little more time it brings me back to a lot of great times because we were so innocent and young and we were just getting into the musicality of what, like, what we like. We didn't even know when we started recording half that album, we didn't even know what our sound was going to be. You know, we got with Max Martin and Dennis Pop and thank God they helped find our sound uh, because I want you back and tear it on my heart leading into bye 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 it's going to be me. That That's who we were. But we were, we were testing out techno and some really horrible songs that just did not work for us <laughs> but we we were just testing things out we had no idea what we were we were teenagers um and none of us had really started writing yet so we were just kind of coming into our own as as artists and musicians and being in the studio with all those amazing producers um really you know taught us a lot of things i learned that I was a very, very lucky, lucky human being. And there were a lot of, you know, even in even in this conversation we've had, you know, you think about the perfect storm that had to happen for us to, or for to me, me to be sitting here in this position right now. And it was like, you know, I joke with my wife, like my wife likes to play scratch off lottery tickets and all that. And I'm always like, I don't, I don't need to play the lottery. I already won the lottery. You know, it's yeah. like, I, I, I'm not going to be that selfish person that goes, oh, I need to win it a couple more times. You know, it's like, man, this was like, this was such a few, you know, five people that have ever lived have got to do, you know, this experience and what I've done, you know, four other people. And, and to have that and to have that going forward, it's like, I could I could lose everything, hopefully not my wife and kid, but I could lose <laughs> everything and still have everything, you know, and yeah. still have, you know, those memories and those moments and that time. 
it, it sounds crazy as hell, but I think that the, there's three things I think in my life that I want people to remember me by. My two kids, that's mm -hmm. two. And then us being, you know, the group that we were. The crazy thing about it is, is we're in a history book, really. Yeah. There's a lot of history things that we did. Hopefully, and what, what it looks like, there's people still talking about us that we haven't done anything. Hopefully, years to come, people will still be talking about us. So, hey, you know what? Who broke the record of Adele's album was in sync, and sync broke that record, and then Adele broke it, and then who, there might be somebody else that's gonna break Adele's. So that when you trace that line, we're always gonna be there.